evening and welcome to the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education meeting for Wednesday, November 30th, 2022. Has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Would you please call the roll? Wyman. Uh, here. Carla. Here. Here. Frizzo. Here. Carnes. Here. Lee. Here. Salaji. Here. Right. Here. Thank you very much. At this time, it's uh, my privilege to introduce a student from Emmeline Cook Elementary, John Ford, who is going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance this evening. formal introduction or not or if I just jump into my update so uh, you know I, I, I wanted to come with John tonight and do the pledge but I also wanted to give a small update on some positive things that have been going on at Emmeline Cook while I was here so <laughs> we just finished up last week a week of giving thanks and we spent uh, the little bit of the week prior last week and then finished up this week in our we have a Monday morning meeting every Monday and every Monday all of the kids come to the come to the gym and we, you know, kind of debrief the weekend a little bit. We do some relaxation techniques. Um, we have sometimes some uh, interesting things and presentations. But um, at this one, there was a particular lesson like there is every week, and that was all of the different things that we give thanks for. So, you know, we have a morning greeting. And as part of that greeting, we asked um, them to just tell their neighbors some things that they're really thankful for. And then we as staff also looked around the room and said different people and positions around the schools that we were thankful for and really modeled what that looks like for them. Uh, later on in the week, uh, we have scheduled every month. Uh, some schools call it like a mashup time. We have, it's called cougar time. It is a time we all get together in multi-age groups. And each uh, classroom has about 30 kids in K through five. And as a new student comes into the school, they get to be a part of this particular classroom. And our goal is, as they enter as a kindergartner, they have all of the same people on the same teacher all the way through. And it's never their classroom teacher initially. So they get a better opportunity to uh, meet their entire school community and interact with both the big kids and little kids. And one of the things that we worked on, we worked on a uh, thankfulness chain which each classroom, big kids helping the little kids write out and then construct a chain as, each, uh, as part of each room. And uh, kind of to end the week, I invited in somebody from our local neighborhood that we were particularly thankful for, and that was the pastor of St. Andrew's Church. Uh, St. Andrew's Church has been a huge advocate <coughs> of ours and the school districts and the neighborhoods in uh, Pastor Karen uh, Jewel Van Buskirk who is uh, retiring, I think she is officially retired as of right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we brought her up and thanked her for all of her time and energy dedicated to our little community over in eCook, uh, whether it be feeding hungry kids, supporting our Books on Wheel initiative, which is directly behind the church usually, or other things they've helped us uh, deal with as well, including being uh, one of our sites for our like rally points and, and safety issues. So they have been invaluable in supporting us um, as a school. So we also were thankful for her. Awesome. Very nice. Yes. Very nice, Mr. Thank Rural. Thank All right. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. coming out tonight. Thank you. Thanks for supporting John. All right. Moving on, we have our land acknowledgement from Dr. Davis. 
Yes, as, as we gather today, we'd like to <coughs> acknowledge that in Oshkosh, uh, we are on the ancestral homelands of the Ho-Chunk Nation and the Menominee Indian Tribe of Wisconsin, who lived along the western shore of Lake Winnebago, Wisconsin's largest freshwater lake entirely within its border. We acknowledge these indigenous sovereign communities uh, who have stewarded this land throughout the generations and pay respect to their elders, past and present. We welcome the duty and opportunity to share stewardship of these lands. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Next on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to move anything on the agenda as printed? Uh, I would like cards. to pull two items for okay. to individually considered, uh, numbers 9 and number 10. And you're referring then to the consent agenda, yes. I'm assuming. Yes. All right. Consent resolution. So 9 and 10? Yes. Okay. Anyone else? I would like to pull number 11. So 9, 10, and 11 will all move to individually considered resolutions. Is there anyone else who wishes to make a change? No. Mrs. Wyman, did you have one? I wanted to uh, change number 4B, switch it out with D, so facilities and finance will go last with other reports, so Mr. Constantine can um, update us on the naming of Webster Stanley School. Oh, that's good. Right. good idea. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes wish to move something on the agenda in terms of the order. Under Wisconsin law, we can't add That's anything, fine. but we can move things around on the agenda. All right, so there's a proposal to change under four, uh, under board administrative reports, which um, facilities and finance with policy and governance, just change the order, mm -hmm. and to take from the consent resolution numbers 9, 10, and 11, and move those to individually considered resolutions. Is there someone who'd like to make that motion? I move. I'll second. Mr. Carnes and Mr. Wright. Please call the roll. Carla? Aye. Rizzo? Aye. Carnes? Aye. Lee? Aye. Salaji? Aye. Ray? Aye. Wyman? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Then we're on to board and administrative reports, um, starting with the board president. And I know that we have a couple of retirements this evening. Jamie Durga has been an EBD teacher in the school district since 2015 and currently serving at Oaklawn Elementary School. Tad Mandike is a social studies teacher currently at Perry Tipler Middle School since 1997, so a 25-year veteran of our district. Donna Shepard, the CLC site coordinator at Merrill Middle, has been with the district since 2005. And James Thebo has been a janitor at Webster Stanley Middle School since 2001. We want to take this opportunity to thank all of these individuals for the, their dedication to our district, to our students, families, and their buildings, and wish them well as they start this new phase of life called retirement. So thank you to Jamie, Tad, Donna, and James. Uh, next is a WASB update. I had an opportunity to attend an advocacy workshop sponsored by WASB in November, earlier in November. Um, it was put on by several staff members, including those from the government relations area, as well as um, a gentleman who serves in member services. I thought there were some wonderful ideas in terms of interacting with lawmakers, what to do, what not to do, in terms of sharing our issues and our concerns and how state law impacts our schools. So I had um, gotten permission to run enough of these for all of you uh, so that you could share as well. Um, I also wanted to, to note that the state education uh, convention is coming up in January. It runs from the 17th through the 20th. Oshkosh is going to be well represented there. We know that Dr. Davis submitted a uh, proposal which was accepted on the naming of the new Val Phillips Middle School. Uh, we know that our transition program for students with special needs, headed up by Mary Beth Connors and supported by 
others in the district, including, you know, I'm just drawing a blank, uh, <laughs> Patty Kimball, and uh, thank you, Chris Steinhelber, <laughs> and I believe Linda Pierron is part of that group. Yes. She will be presenting. And North High School Chorale is going to be singing um, and representing our district on Friday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, many times the, the musical entertainment is provided by music groups south of Highway 33, but I'm delighted that we have uh, Oshkosh representation at that event. And there is still time to sign up if any of you are planning to attend. Um, Stephanie is going to be our representative to the policy and uh, governance uh, group that will meet on Wednesday. And I'm also thrilled to report that we had two high school students who have had a passion for voter education. Mm -hmm. And our board followed up with a recommendation that we support um, via a resolution their, their work in the district and submitted a proposal to be considered by all 421 public school districts and the 15 CESA <coughs> districts, and that has been accepted. Mm -hmm. So it will be voted on by the entire awesome. uh, public, public school uh, group across the state. So lots of representation of Oshkosh at this event, and um, if you haven't had a chance to look at the agenda, I'd encourage you to do so and um, plan on spending some time in Milwaukee getting to know other board members and networking and seeing what we can bring back. We will not have a book report type thing in January, um, but we, <laughs> we encourage you to, to uh, participate as much as your schedule's along. Thank you. Dr. Davis. Yes, the uh, superintendent's good news report uh, for tonight. Um, so starting with a continuation of success, team that's been very successful in the past, uh, the uh, Boxteen Vulcan uh, first Lego League team uh, from Carl Traeger Middle, Perry Tipler and Elps and Oakwood Elementary recently competed in the Lakeshore Technical College uh, Regional Tournament. They competed against 30 other Wisconsin teams and won first place in robot design uh, in the uh, robot design award. The team is advancing to McGuanago uh, sectional tournament on Saturday, December 10th. Uh, additionally, the team's mentor, Eric Ellison, was the recipient of the coach award for his outstanding dedication to the league and to our students. So congratulations to Eric and all of the students that are involved. Um, great job to everyone. Oshkosh West students from Level 3 Global Academy recently had a great time uh, getting to know Meg Lara, a published children's book author. Meg shared her experiences with the Spanish language and her process of creating and publishing a children's book in Spanish. This experience was a great reminder that representation matters uh, and helps students better understand the creative writing process. Uh, second graders from eCook, um, who we heard from tonight, uh, spent um, the month of November creating the things that they are thankful for. Um, their uh, second grade teacher, Ms. Uh, Knobloch, um, wrote a list on a pumpkin, which was then used as a centerpiece for their pumpkin pie snack provided by the school's PTO um, the day before Thanksgiving break. So a uh, pretty cool project uh, there. Uh, Webster Sandy Middle School students learned a valuable lesson on the meaning of gratitude and paying it forward. Students and staff participated in their first Penny Wars challenge to raise money for the Oshkosh Boys and Girls Club. Uh, they were able to donate over $1,000 for Thanksgiving meals given, at the, uh, given to Boys and Girls Club families. Uh, so awesome job to everybody there at Webster Middle. Uh, throughout the month uh, and in the days leading up to Veterans Day, schools have dedicated uh, schools throughout the district had special events uh, and engaged in classroom uh, learning to grow an, un an understanding uh, and appreciation for veterans. We're grateful for all of those who joined in these special events, uh, those who shared their experiences with students, and all of the veterans um, that are part of our district family. So I got an opportunity to attend a couple of those events, and they were, again, phenomenal. So thanks, everyone, for their um, service and uh, commitment. Um, this was mentioned before, but deserves a, a second, uh, uh, I think, acknowledgement. Um, Emmeline Cook Elementary School students and staff had the opportunity to wish Pastor Karen well on, as she retires from St. Andrew's Lutheran Church. For the past 27 years, there's been no better friend and neighbor to E. Cook uh, and its students and families than Pastor Karen. 
for helping families in need to spearheading the Ashkash Feeding Hunger, Hungry Kids Summer Program, uh, to supporting the Winnebago Area Literacy Council. Pastor Karen's generosity has been endless. We certainly uh, are grateful for her generosity and the congregation's commitment to supporting its neighborhood and its neighborhood schools. So thank you again to Pastor Karen. And again, want to uh, continue a reminder of our COVID-19 plan for the school year that can be found on the district's website. And then finally, just a list of uh, what's been a very busy month, uh, but uh, uh, also very fulfilling and just appreciate everybody's welcomeness um, as I make my way through schools and throughout the community. I have a lot of great interaction with, uh, with people across, across the board. So, and that concludes the superintendent's report for tonight. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Uh, moving on, then, we have the District Administrator Supplemental Reports. Uh, this is going to be given tonight by Mr. Kemmer, who participated in the November 9th board listening session. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. So I pinch in for uh, Dr. Gunlock during the November session as the note taker. Uh, we had one participant at our listening session. Uh, the individual came to, to thank the board for their vote to remove Merrill Middle School in favor of more green space. Uh, the individual thought that um, it was the right decision and it was really made in the best interest of kids. So they appreciated that. Uh, the individual also uh, gave a name recommendation for the new elementary school. Uh, and that was Harry Furlong, who is a beloved uh, industrial tech teacher in, <coughs> at Merrill back in the 60s and 70s. So that was the, the gist of it. Thank you. Any sure. questions or Thank comments? You, Thank you very much, Mr. Kimber. Sure. <clears throat> uh, next, we move on to committee reports. Uh, we'll start with education. Yes, yeah, so we met on Thursday, November 3rd, and everything we <laughs> talked about at that meeting was discussed on the November 9th board meeting during the workshop. So I don't know that I need to go in detail anymore. Uh, we will meet tomorrow morning and discuss uh, school report cards. So, thank you. Thank you. And the time of that meeting tomorrow is? 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Thank you. And open to the public. Like all our committee meetings. Very good. Uh, next, then, we have policy and governance. Well, thank you. Policy and governance committee met on Tuesday, November 1st um, at 1 p.m. And we discussed uh, 15 different policies. The main one being District Policy 7510, Use of District Facilities, which uh, centered around if access should be allowed to use um, district facilities on Wednesday nights after 6 p.m. So we had a lot of discussion about that, and we decided to bring that forward to the full board to discuss this evening. Um, most of our other policies we discussed were just language updates. Um, regarding student records, um, head lice, uh, use of tobacco, the policy, policy 5512 use of tobacco, nicotine or related policies or products. Policy was revised to specifically include the term possess within the list of prohibited activities in violation of the policy. Um, and then we had a lot of just grammar um, corrections and things we cleaned up. So to keep my report short, I um, won't go over all the grammatical changes we made. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. They're all posted on the district's website if anyone is truly interested in, in finding each and every grammatical update. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, next then we have the Legislative Committee. Thank you, Dr. Herzog. Legislative Committee met on Thursday, October 27th at 8 a.m. And we really focused on creating bullet points and narratives around three key areas, those being voucher impact, advocacy around per pupil revenue increase, and special education funding. Uh, we have continued our talks on how to create awareness on the voucher impact in the community, especially to the taxpayer who is spending $4.7 million on vouchers. And so we talked about how we're going to produce a document that will um, outline that cost and where it's going. 
and um, we talked about maybe putting an article in the Oshkosh Herald and these kinds of things. And um, our goal is to have bullet points and talking points on each of these key three areas when we go to legislative breakfast in January, when those begin again. We also talked about our meeting, or anybody who had an update on meeting with their legislative representatives gave an update. Our future meeting is TBD. Um, I think we're rescheduling next week. So yeah. TBD on our next meeting, probably um, the week after December 8th, but we will post it um, publicly when we have the date. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Herzog. Thank you, Mrs. Carlin. And our, our final um, committee report for tonight is that of facilities and finance with Mrs. Wyman. Thank you. Our last meeting was held on Tuesday, November 5th, 15th at 1.30. Uh, the main topic for that day were, was the result of the naming of our new elementary school. And I'm not going to give away, Nate, we're going to wait till, if you could wait till the end of the report. Um, Mr. Considine from Bray Architects is going to come up and give you some more information on that. We're very excited. Uh, South Park Middle School Badroom will be named after and have a plaque honoring Nancy Dolish. The Dolish family and the district worked together on this. Oshkosh West Turf Field, a recommendation was made to go with the five, uh, with five low bidders. The bids came in approximately $500,000 under budget. If approved, the project will be done the summer of 2023. The health and the dental plan's performance continues to do well. The district is looking at ways to drive health plan costs to a more efficient uh, base cost. Also, the district is reviewing a slight premium reduction in the dental plan without changes to the plan. So all good news there. The budget variance report, the operational funds for the district made up of Fund 10 and Fund 27. When combined, the district is running more than 3% ahead of budget. Fund 10 is running ahead from last year, and Fund 27 is running a little bit behind, so it averages out. Our next meeting will be Thursday, December 15th, 7.30 a.m. Thank and you, now, Mrs. Wyman. Mr. Constantine. Mm -hmm. Hello. <coughs> Thank you for having Welcome. me tonight. Uh, as described, uh, we're going to go through um, somewhat quickly and feel free to ask questions at the end or, or stop me in between, uh, but the survey won results of the Oshkosh New Elementary School. Um, as we get started here, just a, a few brief uh, bullet points. We're going to go over the results overview. We'll spend a little bit of time going through the breakdown of the results and then just talk to remind you guys about the schedule um, that we've set forth for ourselves. Um, so results overview, we did receive a total of 786 votes on the first survey. Um, this is comparative in nature to the first survey received on the Bell Phillips project. I think we received somewhere in the neighborhood of the high 600s. So a little bit more turnout this time around. Um, and we did see a, a higher turnout for survey two. So we hope to see the same thing um, repeat itself here. Um, within the total vote category of 786, uh, I would say uh, Thirty-three percent is your highest uh, vote getter from the parent and guardian vote category, uh, followed by OSD residents at twenty-six percent, student votes at twenty-four percent, staff votes at fourteen, and non-OSD residents um, at three percent. Just tallying twenty-six total votes. Uh, we're going to break the votes down, um, at least for the, for the information tonight, into two primary categories. Um, there were miscellaneous uh, kind of uh, votes that probably received less than 1% of total votes. Most votes for either for people or for places. And so we're going to break that down for you um, based off of uh, the five uh, categories that we started off with here. So um, as far as people go, we had it, um, all <coughs> votes. Uh, when we collected all of the Poberezny uh, names, and that includes Tom Poberezny and Paul Poberezny, and then there were votes just for Poberezny. When we include all of them, um, they were the top vote getter um, for, for all votes. So that includes all categories across the board. Um, shortly there followed by Webster Stanley, um, and then a small drop off to Jesse Jack Cooper, and very equival um, equivalent numbers to Menominee. Um, from there, it's a pretty pretty big cliff, and we have a, a wide variety of names um, 
I'm not necessarily going to go through all of these um, for speed of the presentation, but um, if, you, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, then if we switch over to the place side of things, uh, we received uh, 41 votes for um, Menominee. Um, we did include, if you recall, Menominee in the, the people slide as well. Um, we feel that it belongs in both um, as the Menominee Park is named after the tribe. Um, so it is both a people and a place. So going back to the place votes, um, that was the largest vote getter. Um, uh, obviously being adjacent uh, to the park um, it has quite the influence, I'm sure. Um, then uh, quite a big drop off um, when it goes to Winnebago, um, varieties of lakes like Lake Lake Shore, Lake View, Lakeside, excuse me, Miller's Bay, Park, again, Park View, Park Side, and so forth. Um, keep it moving here. So th that is um, votes for all, all categories. If we look to break that down a little bit, and um, as mentioned earlier, you guys are students first, you're a student guiding principal, so it made sense to review the student category first. Um, when looking at people uh, or votes for people's names, uh, Webster Stanley was the highest at 12 votes, followed by Menominee at seven, um, and then it jumps down into uh, Martin Luther King, Dorschner, Jesse Jack Cooper, Poberesny, Winnebago, Merrill, and Millers. Um, quite a big drop off there, but, um, but um, interesting, interesting numbers. And then uh, the place side of things, uh, Park was the highest. Uh, so Park View, Park Side combined for nine votes, followed by Menominee at seven, Maple at six, and then it goes into Lake, Winnebago, Millers Bay, Eastside, and Fox River. Uh, to keep uh, going here, uh, the next uh, category we're gonna look at quickly is staff votes. Um, so on the people side of things, Poberesny uh, received the highest votes at 12, followed by Menominee, then Jesse Jack Cooper, Webster Stanley, um, William Waters, uh, and Winnebago, um, and then a slow drop off uh, from there. But the, the two highest vote getters being Poberesny and Menominee. Place, uh, Menominee received the highest quantity of votes at 10, um, then a, a pretty quick drop off for Waters. And then um, it, it kind of evens out with Bay, Lake, some version of Bay, some version of Lake, uh, Winnebago, Miller's Bay, and then Park. Uh, the next category we'll look at is parent and guardian votes. So on the people side of things, Poberesny received 22 votes. Um, then it drops down to Jesse Jack Cooper at 13, Webster Stanley also at 13, um, Menominee at 10, Chief Oshkosh at nine, and then it drops down um, to six votes and below. On the place side of things, uh, Lake received the highest quantity of votes. Uh, again, combination of the two different iterations. Um, and then a drop down to three and lower at that point. Uh, OSD residents, Webster Stanley received the most votes on the people side of things at 24. Uh, Jesse Jack Cooper at 19, Poberesny 17, Menominee 14, Dorschner at nine, and then it drops uh, to Merrill and Winnebago at seven, and then everything else was five votes and less. On the place side of things for OASD residents, Menominee um, again uh, at the highest vote getter at 14, Winnebago at seven, and then the remainder at three votes or less uh, for the remaining topics. Um, so that's kind of a quick breakdown. We didn't include the non-OSD resident votes. It just was such a small piece of the pie. Um, it, it didn't, uh, there was no clear uh, vote getter there. Um, so when we look at all votes, um, not excluding or not looking at just place or just people, and we look at all votes, uh, Poberesny did come in at 57 total votes, Webster Stanley at 55, Jesse Jack Cooper at 41, and Menominee at 40. And then a pretty big drop off um, for Dorschner, <coughs> Merrill, Dorschner. Chief Oshkosh, Winnebago at the 16 and 15 range, and then Lewis Hine at 12. And, and one thing I left out of the facilities and finance report was the committee is recommending that we accept the top four names for uh, future consideration yes. for the next part of the survey. Yes, thank you, Beth. And so as mentioned, um, <coughs> as recommendation would be to move forward with survey two for those four names. Um, looking ahead, as far as schedule goes, uh, we are sitting here on November 30th, so the third bullet point down. Um, survey two would look to launch on Monday, December 5th, 
that um, similarly to the middle school process would sit open for seven full days, uh, would close on the 12th, and then uh, we would look to present uh, Survey 2 data to you on the school board uh, meeting on January 11th. Any questions? Happy to go back to any slide. Thank you. I would just like to clarify how we will get the survey out. I'm assuming that for parents and students in the district, we can easily get that out by, by email. I'm wondering about the, the other residents in the community who do not have school-aged children. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I believe I had worked closely with Katie on the Survey 1 process, and Survey 1 was um, uh, advertised in the local newspaper. Um, it was uh, put uh, in display, I believe, in certain libraries um, for those that maybe didn't have access to vote electronically in other locations um, and other um, news outlets uh, that Katie was pushing um, that information out to. So. Obviously, like you mentioned, the easy access to students and parents, um, but then the same f same <coughs> pathways that occurred in, in Survey 1 would occur in Survey 2. Well, and I should have added the staff are also part of that easier group to mm -hmm. connect with besides the students and their, and their parents. So thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. How long was Survey 1 opened? Was it also a week? Uh, survey 1 was open for two weeks. Um, so this, this process, as far as timeline goes, um, mirrors the first process. Um, so we sat open for two weeks on Survey 1 and then a single week on uh, Survey 2. The, uh, the reason being is that Survey 1 was kind of open-ended. Mm -hmm. So we, it was, you know, anything and everything underneath the stars. And, and we saw that in the survey results. It's cleaned up here, but we saw that. Um, and that's okay. And then Survey 2 is, is multiple choice. And, and uh, there's, no, there's no empty box there. It's, it's check. Did you say last time Survey 2 had more respondents than Survey 1? Yes. And that was also open for only a week? Yes. So my thought went to when it's open for two weeks, there's enough time to advertise in the Herald and give people enough time. But if it hits just right, they may not see it till it's already closing. And so that's why. But if you said last time we did the same thing, mm -hmm. we had more respondents from Survey 2, yeah. then I'm good with that. Mrs. Carlin. Uh, we had 700 and something responses. Are, is that a good number based on, like, where does that fall into your normal with uh, other school districts? Is that higher or lower? And then my second question is um, if you think the second survey will be significantly higher. Yeah, I would say for a population such as Oshkosh and the neighboring communities that spill into Oshkosh Area School District, the numbers are um, a little bit lower than we would expect. I think I would have maybe expected 1,500, 2,000, somewhere in that neighborhood or higher. Um, I think that's what we saw on survey two. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's just a little bit easier for people to pick from a multiple choice instead of maybe come up for something. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're seeing a little bit of the lower numbers on sense, survey yeah. one. Um, and I'm sorry, I forgot your second question. Oh no, that was my second question. Do, uh, or was, do you expect more in yes. the second survey? And the answer is yes, you do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? I'll make a comment to the facilities committee. Um, I appreciate the broad representation of people and places on that final four. So um, I think that'll give the community some something to think about. So mm -hmm. thank you. <coughs> all right. Thank you, Mr. Considine, for joining us and for all your work and preparation for the first survey and now the second survey, yeah. along thank with you. Katie Neiman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Our next agenda item is actually a non-agenda related public forum. Do we have anyone who has signed up to speak <coughs> to the board tonight on a non-agenda related item? Mr. Callahan, let me just read the rules for you. Okay. <laughs> I like to follow rules. So when addressing the board, we ask you to state your name and full address and the topic you wish to address. If you are acting as a spokesperson for a particular group of individuals, please indicate the group you're representing. Second, please state clearly and concisely the matters of concern. Uh, limit your comments to three minutes. And please remember that the use of specific names of district personnel by title or identifiable descriptions may lead to legal liability. 
In such instances, please pursue the district's formal complaint process by contacting the superintendent's office at 920-424-0160 to direct you to the appropriate administrator. Okay, we're ready. All right, uh, thank you very much. My name is Matt Callahan. I live at 2780 Oakwood Circle in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Uh, no complaints today, only compliments. I uh, just want to speak briefly uh, to thank the school board and the OSD administration for their ongoing support of our athletic programs. I began coaching freshman soccer at Oshkosh North in 2005, and I became the boys varsity coach at Oshkosh West in 2007. Uh, at that point in Oshkosh, we were one of the only school districts that played their games on turf fields. Uh, as time went on, that changed, and we became one of the only school districts that were playing uh, that didn't own their own turf field. Uh, and that led to a lot of challenges, uh, scheduling challenges. We repeatedly have issues trying to get uh, non-conference games at home due to stadium availability at Titan Stadium. Uh, last year we hosted a, a, and I use in quotes, home playoff game in Appleton uh, because Titan Stadium uh, wasn't available. Uh, and in addition to scheduling, when you play a sport in which the ball rolls on the ground, practicing on grass and then playing on turf uh, is a bit of a competitive disadvantage. Uh, this past summer, though, a turf field was completed at Oshkosh North High School, and the addition of that field had an immediate impact on the experience that we've been able to provide. Earlier in our season, when Titan Stadium was booked, we were able to host non-conference games at Oshkosh North. Uh, again, in years past, all of those games would have had to have been away games. Uh, at the conclusion of the playoff seating process this year, both Oshkosh North and Oshkosh West were seated high enough to host uh, a home game. And with the North Field as an option, both North and West were able to host a game at 7 o'clock at night under the lights uh, with a lot of students and, and fans there. As the playoffs continued and the weather <coughs> worsened, we were able to go and practice on the North Turf Field when our West Field was too wet. Uh, this helped give us the same training environment that our competitors had, which helped us experience continued success. In closing, I just want to thank the school board and the school district administration again for supporting our athletics through the creation of better facilities. The Oshkosh North Turf Field has only been in play for really one season, and it's already had a large positive impact on the experience that our students uh, receive. So thank you very much for all of your work uh, and support. Thank, thank you very much. Mr. Thank you. I also want to, before Matt leaves, I also want to just acknowledge mm -hmm. uh, just the success that his group had through his leadership with the conference championship this year. So if we can give Matt a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Our next agenda item would be agenda related public forum. There is no one who has signed up for that. So we will move on to the consent resolution agenda. <coughs> For the uh, consent agenda, the board has been furnished with background material on each item or has discussed at a previous meeting. These will be acted upon with one vote without discussion. We need a motion for items one through eight. So, so moved. moved. Oh. And 12, I'm sorry, and 12. Second. Uh, who moved? I'm sorry. I think I did. Right, Mrs. Wyman and the second was Mr. Carnes. Mm -hmm. Please call the roll. Rosa. Aye. Carnes. Aye. Lee. Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Uh, we have three individually considered resolutions, which we moved to that category at the beginning of the meeting when we reviewed the agenda. The first of those is updates on policy 7510, use of facilities. This is resolution number nine. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve updates to policy 7510, use of district facilities as filed with the secretary to the Board of Education. Tom. Oh. Mrs. Salaji moved and. Second. Mrs. Carlin second. Any discussion? I called for it. Okay. So yeah. right. I yeah, will, it, this, this item uh, spoke to me a little bit in, in certain ways, so I'd just like to, to share some thoughts as, as we do this. And um, major points in this report is historically Wednesday evenings and Sundays were set aside for family time and religious practices. Um, in years past, religious classes and events were scheduled on Wednesdays. Uh, this practice has seemed to shift and classes can now be 
uh, potentially held any night of the week. Uh, for this reason, it was proposed that Wednesday evenings be opened to allow for use of the facilities. Um, and the Policy and Governance Committee has recommended that we change that policy to remove the Wednesday night option um, and open that up. And so having said that, got me thinking about some things and I just want to kind of share what that is. I said I'm very happy to see the change to Wednesday nights to allow for activities and not be blocked out for family time or more likely religious activities. As a school district that prides itself on equity, religion is a big part of that. Dr. Davis has said in the past that we should be looking at challenging some of the traditions that have been around for a long time that may no longer seem as relevant, specifically trying to find ways to pay student teachers. And so um, having thought through that, it kind of made me think more. I said this is one of those items as well. Not only are we becoming more diverse in our community based on different cultures and religions, uh, but many more are not claiming any affiliation to religion at all. Uh, based on the last meeting's demographic numbers from the 2021-22 school year, we are 70% white and obviously 30% not white, with at least five different groups represented in that minority. I'm not sure if many of you know, but the numbers for religious faiths in Wisconsin are quite similar. While I understand um, it's important to note that 71% of Wisconsinites declare they are Christian, 25% classify themselves as unaffiliated. Um, that means 25% of Wisconsinites are not part of any religion at all. Very similar to 30% of students who are dist in our district who are not white. When we talk equity, it is important to note that it involves race, culture, gender, and religion. More people in our community are non-religious um, than maybe we realize. When I was at the high school graduation ceremonies this past spring, I noticed at least one religious song, uh, more specifically a Christian song taken from a verse from the Bible. Uh, that was played at the West graduation and I believe another one from the North graduation. Um, while that may have been more acceptable in the past and been a tradition, I would urge us to, to be different and maybe be better. I'm confident that there are plenty of songs to choose from that are not religious for a public school graduation. We represent everyone in our community, black, brown, Hispanic, male, female, non-binary, Christian, Muslim, atheist, and everyone else I didn't mention. We need to make sure we are thinking about that as we make even the smallest decision because our community and our students deserve it. I absolutely accept and support this item. I thank policy and governance for bringing it up and talking about it. It got me thinking a little bit deeper about what that means. And so, as I said, I support this, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carnes. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak to this item? No. Please call the roll. Carnes? Aye. Lee? Aye. Solachi? Aye. Wright? Aye. Wyman? Aye. Carlin? Aye. Curzon? Aye. Resolution carries. Thank you very much. Next we have resolution number 10. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve the contracts for the new field turf system for West High School filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. Mr. Kearns and Mrs. Szilagyi. Um Any discussion? I asked for this one as well, so why don't I just keep going? You're on a roll, um, Mr. Kearns. Go can ahead. I ask for Mr. Nihans to come up and just answer a couple questions? Of course. Don't worry, it's all stuff we've talked about before. I just want to put it out there so we... Um, so there's been discussion about the field size and there was a lot of conversations regarding that and what it would mean. Um, at the end of the day, I think the conversation was that it would be built 65 yards wide so that it, in theory, could host a varsity soccer game, even though it won't because we don't have the capacity of the stands and everything around it. Is that right? That's correct. So I wanted to make sure because as long as we can host a varsity game, then I think it's fair to put a JV game on that same field. And so based on the size of that, I just wanted to, to make sure, because I know I've talked to some of you as well about that and we've talked in other meetings. And so I was very happy that we came to that and that the, the JV and in practicing might be more important, right? As Mr. Callahan had said, that, that offers a lot of other options too. So that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Is there any other discussion on this item? Yeah, I'm... Mr. Mr. Wright? 
Well, I guess I'll state some, some of the obvious. I'm really excited for this project uh, to start because I, I think that it provides a lot of um, excellent opportunities for our students and our community. Um, anytime we can uh, get, have more participation in activities that we're hosting and host more activities and draw more members of our community and children into positive environments, I'm really encouraged by that. Um, I mean, in, in addition to that, um, it's something that's needed so that we can be competitive with other school districts. Uh, something that I go back to um, on a regular basis is that we, we as a community need to be competing in all spaces, academic, athletic, extracurricular, um, because all the other school districts are doing that as well. And if we're not competing to provide the best services for our children and good facilities where they can compete on an equal playing field, that's gonna cost the, the community in the long run by um, not having as many families and students. So I'm always <coughs> supportive of um, items like this, uh, especially when they come in under, under bid by I think a half a million dollars so the community can know that as well and yeah that's it thank you can this uh this resolution is also available online but i do want to point out that it is going to cover h and h civil contractor cr fox electrical sprint turf field turf jw industries for a press box musco lighting for stadium lighting point of beginning that's design and construction services contingency general conditions and bonds for a total project cost of one million seven hundred and sixty six thousand five hundred and thirty five dollars and three cents mr kearns can i add sorry um no you're fine no i don't yeah uh, i agree with with what mr wright had said i think it's also fair to understand that there we have to it's a fine balance between where we put our money right we don't have an infinite number of those dollars and so i had asked dr davis at a previous meeting about is this the best place for that money to go which if that's the decision as mr wright had said at some point we have to invest in our facilities because it's the cost of not doing it than doing it as as Ms. wyman has said before um, but there were teachers concerned because they have you know issues in their own buildings and in their classrooms and and things like that that are also out there that are are difficult so balancing athletic facilities and actual learning you know i'm sure is a is a balancing act every day sure. um but that was kind of some of the feedback i had heard from from staff directly that just wanted me to know that that and i i appreciated that but um saying that i'm very much supportive of this so thank you anyone else Oh, I just I agree with what he said we do have to be <laughs> just to clarify we do have to be investing in academics and athletics and extracurriculars you Absolutely. know all those things so yeah and we have heard from people who um, believe that our music facilities uh, need to be addressed and we do know that part of the facilities advisory committee 2.0 addressed the the uh, need for um, a performing arts facility on the north side of the river because the Alberta Kimball simply can't support everything. And um, so that's, that's something this board or a future board will have to consider moving forward. It's, it's all facilities mm -hmm. for all students. Any other comments or questions? Please call the roll. Aye. Salaji. Aye. Ray. Aye. Wyman. Aye. Carlin. Aye. Herzog. Aye. Carnes. Aye. Resolution carries. Thank you very much. Resolution number 11. Be it resolved that the Oshkosh Area School District Board of Education approve naming the South Park Middle School Band Room after Nancy Jean Dolish as filed with the Secretary to the Board of Education. So moved. Second. That was uh, Mr. Wright and Mrs. Salaji. Mr. Carnes. Is there any discussion? I had asked that this be pulled. Um, <clears throat> all of the board members, I believe, were contacted in summer of 2021 uh, by one of uh, Mrs. Mrs. Dalish's former students, Matt Green, 
and as, as well as some other former students, and uh, Tim Dalish, Nancy's son, who was um, a member of the, the staff here in the district for many years. This brought back a lot of memories for me because um, when I worked in the central office, I had the good fortune of visiting classrooms throughout the district, and I always enjoyed visiting that of Mrs. Dalish. She always had a smile on her face. She accepted every child where they were, where he or she was, and moved them forward. Um, she had such a positive impact on kids. She had such a, con a can do attitude that everyone could succeed in that classroom. And when, it, whether it was the, the, uh, um, the, uh, <laughs> the Memorial Day parade or one other parade, the South Park band was prominently featured. It was one of the largest bands, if not the largest band, uh, of all the middle schools. And they, they knew how to march, they knew how to play those instruments and they brought a great deal of pride not only to South Park but to the entire community. And so, um, I, to me this is a very appropriate mm -hmm. uh, use of this name. Um, the, the, the music program that she was part of at South Park was, was very well regarded, very well respected. The, the percent of participation in that school was phenomenal for the size of the school. And a lot of that had to do with her in the band room and Mrs. Anderson in the choir room, and Mr. Schwebke in the, in the orchestra room, necessitating an addition to the school, uh, a music addition, specifically because of the work of those individuals. <coughs> and um, we are privileged tonight to have Nancy's son here. I don't know if you wish to make any comments. Trying to hold it together here, Dr. Obama. I am too. <laughs> I, I just appreciate it being considered, and it means a lot to the alumni and my, my family. And it's just nice to hang out with some former colleagues and friends today as well. So mm -hmm. appreciate the consideration. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other comments to be sure? Please call the roll. Salachi? Aye. Ray? Aye. Wyndham? Aye. Carolyn? Aye. Person? Aye. 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 Very well deserved. It's important that we recognize staff and their contributions to their to our students, their families, and our community. And um, Nancy Dollish fits in that group. Thank you all. Okay. Are there requests for future agenda items at this time? Okay, moving on. <laughs> Are there any announcements? Oh, I have one announcement. I had asked Sherry to put together the uh, Christmas concerts, all the Christmas concerts, yes. onto one piece of paper, oh. which she did. Nice. So I'm excited that I can see them at a glance and hopefully get to as many as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. Very nice. good. Thanks, Sherry, and thank you for your request. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to make an announcement. We uh, pride ourselves in the district in terms of having partnerships and collaborations with various groups. And in the area of literacy, there's the Altrusa Club of Oshkosh, which is a philanthropic group, uh, which has a focus on literacy and reading. We also have the Winnebago Area Literacy Council, which <laughs> from its name, you can tell, focuses on literacy. And we have the Oshkosh Area United Way, which sponsors the Dolly Parton and at, um, Imagination Library to promote literacy from children th from birth to age five. Southwest Rotary is partnering with the Parent Connection mm -hmm. to serve 128 children this year who uh, are in need of memories, positive memories of the holiday season mm -hmm. through gifts and through books. And so these are four books that have been donated to serve children birth to five um, through awesome. the parent connection. And their goal is to collect enough books so that every child on that list of 128 readers or future readers will receive three books this holiday season. So if any of you have an interest in contributing, I know that each of us has received an email from Christopher Ulrich from Oshkosh Southwest Rotary. You can contact Christopher directly. Um, and if you have any books you'd like to donate, they just ask that they be new, um, new books, 
uh, and books that would serve children birth to five. Another collaborate, collaborative effort of an entity in our community who would like to engage with, with our students. So I thank you for that. Any other announcements? Mm -hmm. All right. Then we, we will be adjourning to executive session for two purposes. Number one, considering the disciplinary data of specific persons under Wisconsin Statute 19.85, parent one, parent F. A, review expulsion recommendations from an expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while not at school or, or while not under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others at school under Wisconsin Statute 120.13, parent one, parent C, parent E. And two, considering the employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises authority under Wisconsin Statute 19.85 per and one per and C. A, discuss employee performance. B, private conference concerning employee contract matter. Following the private conference, the board may reconvene into open session to take action if necessary on matters from closed session. That would mean if we um, decide to come back into open session and, uh, and talk about what we had uh, concluded in, in closed session, we may do that or we may not, depending on how that goes. But I would need a, a, a motion and a second to uh, move into executive session. So moved. Second. Harlan and Salaji, please call the roll. Right. Aye. 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 Aye.